Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to look at a new distro that is seeking to become a flavor status of Ubuntu. This is Ubuntu DDE, which is Deepin Desktop Ubuntu. And uh, we are going to have a look at this. It is brand new. I believe it literally was just launched within like a day or so. So we do have to keep that in mind. There are definitely some growing pains here. But first, let's go ahead and have a look over at their website. So this is UbuntuDDE.com. I'll link that in the description down below. And uh, this is definitely not right now at the time I'm recording this video, not for a basic user to grab it and spin it up. There does appear to be installation issues. It took me three times to get this guy installed. I'll kind of walk through how I finally did get it installed. Uh, but there are definitely a few issues with the installation process. Do not try and install it on a machine with like a dual boot. It is using, uh, it's not using the Ubiquiti installer. I believe it's using Calamaris, I think. Um, it's not using the standard Ubuntu installer and it poses some problems on the installation. All right, uh, but if you do know how to uh, play around with things and get things working, definitely give it a try, give them some feedback, let them know how the project is going. So a brief introduction, it is a remix flavor of Ubuntu with the Deepin desktop environment. So Ubuntu DDE is a Linux distribution based on Ubuntu with the most beautiful desktop environment. Its initial release will be the remix based on 2004. So even the 2004 base is still, I believe it is still in uh, not yet completely released. So we'll keep that in mind as well. All right, so you can go ahead and grab the download. There are some screenshots of it here, but I have it installed on a virtual machine. Clicking on the download links, you have a Google Drive link, you have a SourceForge link, and you have a torrent link. We have a MD5 checksum there. Uh, under their support, this is a huge downside. There's no support except going through a Telegram channel. So if you don't have Telegram, you're not going to get any support. They do have a forum, but they appear to not do anything over there. Everything apparently is done through there. There are some great people interested in this so far who are passing some information up uh, to the team. There's no uh, bug report systems listed yet. We do have the big installation problem. And I guess there's some issues with the forum posting. I didn't look at that one. So this is the error that you'll get. Uh, of course, this is not in English. Uh, the English version is down below it. Would you stop popping up in my face? Thank you. Uh, basically, this is the type of uh, error that you get. I got this a few times. There is no automatic partitioning. You do have to set up your partition scheme manually. I set mine up by erasing the disk. I set up a 500 megabyte uh, FAT32, mounted that at boot, and called that a and flagged that as boot. And then I took the rest of the space, ext4, mounted it at at uh, your mount point slash, uh, just your basic root mount point, and that still exited with an error, but I am actually able to log into the system. So something failed on the very end, but at least I got a bootable system out of the deal. That's all we find over there. So as of right now, there's not a lot of information. There's not a lot of specific help. Uh, there, They do have contact information, uh, Facebook, you have Twitter, and you have an email address, or you have a contact form over there. So let's go ahead and uh, boot up the distribution itself and have a look at what we are seeing. So we first get into our scene over here. Like I said, it did take me three times to get this guy installed. Uh, it is installed, although it did still give me an error, but it did allow it to, in to install the process. I did actually get two... Uh, two um, user accounts on here. Presumably one of those is a failure to remove the old one, I guess. And so I'm not sure what's up with that. Maybe that's part of the error, but uh, uh, there's actually, um, there were actually two user accounts on there. Is that what they have there? What's this one here? Yeah. So this one here, I think was the live one. This is the one that I had created. So if I enter my super secret password here, so if you do get it installed and it's not accepting your login, click on that button and then head on back up. 
Uh, we did have to set the uh, screen resolution to full screen, but it does appear as though it saved those settings. So before we dive into this, let's go ahead and address the Deepin desktop because that's not going to be as much reflective on the system itself. The Deepin desktop for me, it's one that I've always been intrigued in, but at the same time, it becomes boring to me. So it's like it's like a, a nice candy where the Deepin desktop is really cool at first, and then it kind of just it, the the intrigue of it fades away and for me earlier versions I haven't run it in about a year but earlier versions it was really becoming annoying with it would double over notifications you couldn't turn off some notification sounds some of that stuff may have been fixed by then we do have over here uh, various user accounts so you see we do have two user accounts on here you can create a new account we can set our display and then we have display scaling if you want to mess with any of that. Um, you can do that so you can see here that, uh, hold on, let me turn on desktop audio for you guys so you can kind of hear the notification sound. Okay, so the challenge that I've always had, um, sure, let's go ahead and report the problem. Hopefully that'll help them out. Um, the challenge that I've had is it would give us the notification settings and then like for Thunderbird, for example, a notification would come through for Thunderbird and then the system. So every time an email would come through, I'd get two notifications. That might be something that is fixed by now. I, I don't know. Uh, I was able to change my resolution to the appropriate size without any issues. Um, I'm guessing this is just something to do with your desk, uh, with your laptop screens, which don't have any implications here. Here's your default applications, Firefox, Thunderbird, um, text editor. We have MPV uh, and Celluloid. Celluloid would be our default for music. We have Celluloid also our default for video. Um, Firefox web browser is the default for pictures. That's interesting. Um, of these, let's go with Gthumb. <laughs> I think that would be the better one. Uh, and as some people have said in the installation, we'll get to this when we look at our software, but uh, I did not see a terminal installed. <laughs> here's here's transparency so you can uh, set more or less transparency. So the Deepin desktop itself is kind of cool. They should have a couple theming involved. So we do have a few different theming options. Overall, I do really like the theming that they that they use. And uh, even their their theming is is very nice and very intriguing. So I'm not going to mess with any of the theming stuff. Uh, here's our wireless stuff. Here's our speaker uh, volumes. Here is sound effects. So you can turn on or turn off. Uh, various things so they have had it they have added these fine tunes since i had my issue with the notification sounds always doubling up so i'm not sure if this resolves any of those or not but that is something that is new so there's uh deep in itself of course in deep in they you see that they do give us the default they give us more of the windows layout if you do want more of the mac layout you still have the option you can come in here hit your fashion mode and I uh, just need to right click, uh, right click on the panel there and you can select fashion mode uh, versus efficient mode. You can go into the menu and up here, this is what will give you more of like a Mac type view versus a Windows type view. And then even on like the Mac type view, you can click on the icon up here and go with a list or an icon view. So you do have a lot of nice options inside of the Deepin desktop. Uh, you can set where the panel is at, top, bottom, left, right. You can adjust the size of it just between large, medium, and small. You can keep it show, keep it hidden, or smart hide. And there's really, I don't know of any other plugins you can add to it, but you can add the date, time, of course, the, the power, and the onboard is the onboard keyboard. That's what I'm seeing over there. Okay, so that's Deepin uh, desktop out of the way. Let's go ahead and have a look at what else is in the system. One of the things that we find that is not in the system is there is no terminal installed. So if you are looking for a good Linux distribution, but you don't need to go into the terminal, well, this one doesn't even have one. Chances are you are going to have a problem where you're going to want a terminal. So let's go ahead and uh, see if we can install a terminal. Let's have a look at the software center and see what we get. 
Sure, let's go ahead and let the caching get set up. So I did leave a nice comment in a uh, in a review um, on, uh, I think it was on the Makulu review, where they said, hey, you know, show us some of the, the PPAs and things like that, which on an Ubuntu-based distribution, fair enough. I, I agree with that. Let's have a look at what our software system looks like. So we're running uh, Open a Run DDE development. So you can see that's where we are at. I did see some extra PPAs. PPAs in here as well. Let's see. I gotta remember where the PPAs happen to be at. Um, I thought it was in software and updates. I did see some PPAs. I'm not sure if that was. Um, oh, uh, duh. Okay, just just the PPAs for. Um, for the, the deep and desktop itself. So there's really nothing else over here. All right, let's go ahead and let's just do a search for uh, your favorite terminal and mine, whichever one shows up in the list. Terminal, hello, search. Can we get a terminal? There we are, we have Terminus. Sure. So the overall theming is good. Um, that's nice. It should look fairly consistent. Let's go ahead and open up a few different applications here. I think Firefox is over here. So let's open that up. And let's see. We have, let's open up our file manager as well. I just want to make sure the theming looks good and consistent throughout. And it really does. The, the theming is, it's good, it's clean, it's modern. One of the things about Deepin is it's such a good and clean desktop. Uh, which is which is nice. All right, let's close tabs. Still installing our terminal. All right, well that goes ahead and installs. Let's see what we have. We have Firebird. We have um, <laughs> Firefox and Thunderbird. Wow, Celluloid MPV. Uh, we have GIMP. We have some LibreOffice, GThumb, Chess Mahjong, Sudoku. LibreOffice, and just some basic system tools. So definitely a not a bloated system. Uh, it is going to be, you know, overall you're going to get a system that's uh, that's actually very good. Uh, not bloated, not, uh, not a lot of extra software, so that's actually good. Let's have a look at our LibreOffice. Let's see which version we have and is that uh, well configured. Okay, about LibreOffice, we have the latest LibreOffice, so that is good. Let's see how it looks. Okay, so it does have a nice, good, clean interface, so I like that. And, of course, I always have to check if there is a spieling checker on here. Uh oh, we have no spieling checker. We don't have any of the plugins installed here. So the spelling checkers, your synonyms, things like that, you're going to have to install those. I actually have a video about how to do that. Terminal, what is taking you so long to install? I have no earthly idea. I, did I see Synaptic Package Manager? I did. Let's, that might give me an error. Oh, wait, hold on. Now it's, wait, what's it doing now? Come on, Mr. Terminus. There it goes. It is not being, oh, if, really? You want me to, okay. I'm not giving you a, see, this is why I should actually pay more attention to what terminals I'm running so that I actually know what to install here. Apparently, Terminus is not going to give me what I need. See, I usually just go with the default with whatever terminal happens to be on a system, but when we don't actually have a, terminal installed, I run into this problem where I don't know what we want. There you go. There's there's terminology. That's a lot of stuff. Okay, so everything is installed. Let's close that. Let's close that. There we, there we are. Now we got a terminal. Man, that's ugly. <laughs> Let's see, if, see how the other one looks. No, oh, they're both ugly. All right, never mind. All right, we'll just we'll just deal with ugly. How's that? Uh, apparently, I can't uh, scale up the size of it though. So my apologies, I can't scale up the size. I want to see 
if we have snaps installed. So indeed it is, uh, oh, look at that. The Terminus app is a snap. So anything that we are installing through the uh, through the software center, because this is based on the new Ubuntu where everything goes through the snap center, um, yeah, it installed Terminus app as a snap package. Okay, we have GTK common themes, GNOME 338. Really? Is GNOME still installed on this guy? That's interesting. All right, so there is a intriguing first look at the Ubuntu DDE. So let's go ahead and look at your pros for now. Uh, overall, the system seems very stable. Uh, it has the stability of Ubuntu with the Deepin desktop, which I have to say is a very nice, very intriguing desktop environment. I like it. Like I said, personally, I get a little bored with it, but uh, that's really a matter of personal preference. If you do want something that has that, you know, modern and very consistently works well with all the different applications, Qt, GTK, whatever else, it does work very well. It's a great first start to the application. It's also not bloated. It, it's, it's Ubuntu with the DDE. That's, uh, that's a, a good thing going for it. On the downsides, as of right now, there is very little support, just owing to the fact it's brand new, but they should probably get those installation issues solved here uh, before it becomes a bigger deal than it should be. That's really even before you announce it. You should make sure that it has been tested and installed a number of different ways. Uh, that way you're not going to get people who just get frustrated and leave it alone forever because it doesn't boot. I assure you, you can get it booting. You just have to set up the manual partitioning correctly. So that's, uh, that's the thing. And, uh, I, it's based on Ubuntu. So this is going to be a criticism of Ubuntu and most distros based on it, not just of this one. But if I go into a stop store and I, uh, you know, if I go to the to the main software center, it installs everything by default snap. I don't like that personally. Uh, and the fact they don't have a terminal installed on default is a little bit on the odd side for whatever it's worth. So that's kind of my first take. I'm not about to dump on the system at this point in time. It's, it's you know, I think, less than 24 hours old, maybe. So definitely go have a look at it. Just keep in mind, you may have a few issues with the installation. I think as more people uh, start looking at it and get feedback to them, then I think that that's actually going to fix and solve those problems. I'll go ahead and tell you what boot partitions I used uh, in the description down below as well. So there is my first look at Ubuntu DDE. Go have a look at it if uh, you like Ubuntu and or the Deepin desktop. Thanks for coming along. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already. Have a look at switchtolinux.com forward slash support if you want to help support the channel. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.